editing software. So I'm really enjoying creating these little snippets at the beginning. Um, in fact, it is Adobe something. I don't know. I have the creative cloud. I have access to that now. And uh, I think it may be what Storm uses. And I've been like envious of her little intros uh, for a while now. And then when I started using the um, Premiere or Express or I don't even know. Um, I think it's Express. Anyway, when I started playing with that earlier, uh, I realized I could put the little clips. Uh, Y'all don't care, but I'm excited. So if you're enjoying that, let me know. I think it may be something that I continue to do for my videos is create those little snippets. Um, that's neither here nor there, though, because today uh, we are here to talk about my feelings upon my most recent reread of The Key Trilogy by Nora Roberts. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do is go through each book separately and give a little discussion of the plot points and then try not to, you know, give anything away. Uh, but then I will talk to you at the end about all three together. Um, I do love this trilogy, uh, but let's just get into it. So what I'm going to do is talk to you about each book separately and then my thoughts on them all together. The first book is Key of Light. I love these. I know a lot of people don't like these kind of fronts, but I love these little keyhole fronts there. Um, and I, what are they called? French flaps, maybe? Oh, no. I like them. The little front inset says, Fate brings three women together for a chance to unlock their deepest desires. Mallory has the soul of an artist and an eye for beauty. She must find the key of light on the first of three dangerous quests that could fulfill her destiny or forever destroy her life. So um, as the first book, this one introduces us to all the main players. Um, we've got Mallory, who is the main focus of this book. We also have Dana and her stepbrother, Flynn. And then we have Zoe, who is the third of three women who are invited to the peak. Now, Warrior's Peak is this giant mansion up just outside of the small town where they live and they get invited to a cocktail reception and when they get there they are the only three people who were invited and um, the owners of the peak who are Pitt and Rowena tell them that they have been chosen to compete in this quest. Now, this competition is not against any other human beings. In fact, their quests are a competition against time and against Cain, who is this horrible sorcerer god. Thousands of years ago, there were three daughters. These three daughters are the daughters of the king of the gods in Celtic mythology. And uh, their mother was a human who was allowed to go behind the curtain of dreams, the veil between the worlds, and live with her love, the king. And they had these three daughters, half mortal, half god. These demigoddesses uh, were well beloved by most of their people, but Cain and his little faction hated the fact that they were half mortal. He stole their souls and sealed them in a box and... Every generation, three new women are called. They have to compete and try to find the keys to unlock the box of souls. They have four weeks, one spin of the moon cycle in which to do it. All three of the women have found themselves at a crossroads. Their jobs are having issues. They're looking for something more out of life. And Mallory, who worked at the local art gallery, has had a run-in with the owner's new, presumptuous, peppy, little, know-nothing wife. And she ends up being let go <coughs> in order to try to spread her wings and fly. Um, but because they have been given some money for taking on the quest, she's able to kind of 
try to focus on the quest and figure out what she's doing with her life. And in process, she meets Flynn, Dana's brother, and there is some chemistry there. Um, and the story goes from there. Now, Cain does attack them in dreams. Um, and I don't want to give anything away, but you can imagine because this is the first of three books and a Nora Roberts book, she does eventually complete her quest. And in process, she gets to know Dana and Zoe, as well as Flynn's two best friends, Jordan and Brad. Jordan is Dana's ex, and he is important to her search. She is the second one for Key of Knowledge. Dana was working at the library and ends up quitting her job uh, because the new supervisor at the library brought in her niece and immediately um, went ahead and gave her niece a better paying job ahead of Dana who had worked at the library for years and they are just nasty, nasty women. Um, the inside of the flap says Dana has always found her greatest passion in books. She must search for the key of knowledge on the second of three dangerous quests that leads her to find the truth hidden among deception and lies or succumb to her worst nightmare. So again, Kane amp amps it up a little bit in this one, but instead of pushing her to quit, it pushes her to work harder. And I've always connected the most with Dana. Um, the three women decide that they are going to open a shop together. So Mallory with her art, she has a little gallery that she opens. And then another part of the house, Dana opens a bookstore. And our third woman, Zoe, is a hairdresser. And so she opens a salon in this house. They're getting together. Um, but I've always connected most with Dana because of her love of books and knowledge and research. Funnily enough, while I still very much connect to her, she's not the one I connected to the most this reread. But I love her story. Her and Jordan getting a second chance. Absolutely phenomenal. And they're very snarky together. Uh, and just the way that they vibe and the way the women and the men all speak to each other and work together reminds me a lot of my friend group, which has grown um, since the time I first read these books. So they reminded me of my friend group when I was... 1920. Um, they remind me more of the friends that I have now that have stuck around and it's glorious. Um, these are not like, there are some dark sections and there's maybe a one, one and a half on the spice. There's a little bit of spice, but not much, but in the end, it's more about psychology working together and working through who you are and what you want in life. Um, and I love how Nora Roberts can pack that into these fun little magic quest stories, right? Um, so again, book two finished. She finishes the quest. I'm not going to give too much away, but they finish that cycle of the moon and we get to Zoe. Zoe is the hairdresser. She's also a single mother. And this one is Kia Valor, which, um, you know, is courage, and Zoe doesn't really think she has any. Um, it says, Zoe is about to discover her true courageous spirit. She must find the key of valor on the last of three dangerous quests that will force her to confront her darkest fears or suffer immeasurable loss. Um, so, again, she's a single mom, and she is a hairdresser. Her backstory is that she got pregnant when she was 16. And... She's always been poor. She's from a trailer park and um, she had this client of her mom's that was very, very rich and would have her mom and Zoe is the oldest uh, child of her mother. They would go over to the houses and get this woman ready before big parties. And when she got old enough, this woman started hiring Zoe to help uh, waitress and things at these parties. And, with all that going on, Zoe eventually met the woman's son, who was a couple of years older than her, but they fell into lust. They thought they loved each other, and they ended up conceiving their child. Um, and while he said that he loved her, and they were going to do the right thing and run away together or whatever, 
He, in fact, did not do the right thing. His mother intimidated him and Zoe, and he's never had anything to do with their son. Um, she doesn't get child support or anything. Just she ran away, gave birth, and took care of herself and her son. Uh, but she doesn't see that as being courageous. She sees it as doing what she needed to do. Uh, so throughout the book, she is confronting not only these feelings of not thinking she's good enough or courageous enough because she's just from this girl from West Virginia trailer park, right? Who does hair, but also learning that she is very courageous, that she does have her child, that she's fierce and she's smart and she's amazing and just accepting in the friends that she has and also Flynn and Jordan's other best friend, Brad. Bradley Vane the third. Um, this gentleman is part of a very wealthy family who started Homemakers, which is like a Lowe's, basically. And so she immediately doesn't trust him or herself around him because she likes him, but he reminds her a lot of Simon's father and that is a big plot point in the story as well um, and this time around I connected with Zoe more than the other two uh, probably because I've got my kids you know my girls um, I definitely connected with her spirit as I was reading it I cried a couple of times during her story I think I may have cried during Dana's as well um but as much as I love Mallory and Dana, I think Zoe was my favorite this time around. Um, and again, I'm not going to tell you any other plot points, but they're very sweet. They're very fun. There are some dark moments, but it is about understanding who you are, accepting who you are, following your dreams and figuring out how to be you and connect with the people around you. And when you accept that, and you accept fully who you are and embrace it, you can find magic. Um, I love Nora Roberts. I especially love her books like this, Light Overcoming the Darkness and uh, Found Family and all of those things. So individually, they each get about a four, four and a half star. Uh, as a trilogy, I would rate the trilogy, the overarching story, as a four and a half star. It's not quite a five star, uh, but it is one of my favorite trilogies. And I think this is my fourth or fifth time rereading them. So I don't think I can give it much higher praise than that. As much as I enjoy books, I don't typically reread them, especially not now when I've got so much other stuff going on. Um, I like finding new worlds to dive into, but sometimes you got to find your rereads, your comfort reads. And this series is one of those for me. So if you haven't read them, I suggest that you pick them up. And uh, that's all I've got for you guys today. So I will talk to you again soon. Until next time, stay safe out there. Bye.